well, well. You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. You can't run in backs, it ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with, with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say win. Wins when wins, congregation say amen. Trades, debates, wins, losses, the latest news, but Prophet Kev speak, he got him saying hi. Ah, right, welcome to Preach Kev, Preach with Rashad. We are the prophets in the episode, another sermon. Coming at you from Wildcard Sports here on Wildcard TV. We are back. Rashad, what's going on, man? Back with another another playoff uh, pr- uh, profit theory. What's going on? Well, nothing too much, man. Just uh, just the usual, man. You know, we, like you said, we get, we're gearing up for the NFL season. Um, I know it's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of teams about the vaccination stuff. You know, will, will they or won't they? It's going to be crazy, man. Like, if, if teams have to forfeit some games, you know, last year they were readjusting the schedule to accommodate. But this year you got you, you know, got your chance. But, but this year, you know, you got to either get it or, or uh, forfeit. And that stuff can really divide some locker rooms too, man. You think about, man, a, a, a whole position got to go quarantine because, you know, they get game checks and you may miss a game and now you just lost your bonus because you didn't get three tackles in this game when you missed on a couple of <laughs> pitches. Right. You, know, you, you know, you can have some, have some guys missing out on a couple of couple incentives, man. So that's that could be crazy. And yeah. then you know, one game can always just turn. You know, if you, if you forfeit a week eight game because of you know COVID violations, or whatever, that could be a reason you miss the playoffs at the end because you forfeit. It's automatic L. You didn't give yourself a chance to compete. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I don't know. If you saw Kirk Cousins was talking about something. Like he going he might have to get plexiglass around him. So he. <laughs> I was like, "Come on, bro! Just take the, just." Get, I guess you, everybody got the undisclosed reasons for not doing it, but in, in, at the end of the day, if like if you Kirk Cousins or you, I think Cam Newton is not and Lamar Jackson is not. If you get if you get the, you know, we get we get to the Super Bowl, and now boom, you get COVID or you got to go protocols, and now you can't play. They're like, not postponing that game. For they're you. not postponing. They're not going for you, bro. Like that's and that's and that's the sad part about it. But uh, and that's and that that's that's gonna be tricky, man. And that's when we talk about the uh the profit playoff theory. You know, that's something that's like not add into this, but you have to very be cautious. Like, like as far as you know, if somebody missing three, four, five games because they you know COVID protocols, that's just that's just stuff like, we bro, just can't. You gotta think about people like Lamar and Cam have had COVID. They've right. had it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it COVID, these these variants, Delta, whatever they're calling it, you know, all these other variants out there, it's it is making its way around, man. And you know, you never know what kind of lifestyle people are living outside of football practice, you know, parties, promotion, promoting products, traveling, stuff like that. You I mean, I just hope everybody stays safe, you know. I mean, I know last year was uh tough for the NFL to navigate through that. But this year, they basically have a zero tolerance policy. We're gonna go on <laughs> whether you vaccinated or not. We going on, bro. Tell, tell me this: if you told me I give, if I if I told you I give you twenty million dollars to play a sport, and you gotta be vaccinated, bro, I'm doing it. I don't care. <laughs> I'm doing it. I ain't. Yeah, like, I ain't going party like for. Yeah, you know, it just it just. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, like I, nothing, I, I understand it both ways, man. Like I know people feel like they being experimented on, and they feel like this isn't a legit thing. But at the same time, you know, you you want to protect yourself, your family, and the people you're coming into contact with. You know, so but everybody has their own perspective, their own prerogative. This is going to be something that divides the NFL, the country, and really the world for the next couple of years until COVID is no longer a thing. So um, I guess everybody got to just you know. Except this is this is our reality for, I mean, we spent all 2020 with with, with this going on. We're basically through most part of 2021 with it, and with these variants popping up, it, this gonna be in play in 2022. So 2022. we uh, COVID is gonna be here for a minute, man. Oh man, let me tell you somebody who COVID uh, here for a good time and a long time, man. Oh, all right. So let's let's get into the NFC South. Uh, we we already we already tackled the AFC South. Hopefully you already heard that show. Uh, if you didn't, make sure you check that out on all platforms. Uh, certain you know, got, got got to do a little plug, Rashad. I mean, go ahead, preach care, preach with Rashad. Every platform, Spotify, our, our radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, 
anywhere else, man. Make sure y'all check that out. Check the AFC South show and here's the NFC South show. Um, man, so this division is uh, we talked about last year with all the old heads. Uh, Drew Brees now retired from the Saints. You still got Matt Ryan. You still got Tom Brady. Um, and the Panthers are Panthers are, are still young. They brought in Sam Darnold now as a low low risk high reward type of situation. So we we got we got we got a, a wide range of teams as far as like you know where where they're at and where the direction they're going in and what place they're taking. Uh, so we're going we're going to start with the Atlanta Falcons, who I think are in a crazy situation because they're in that they're in that they're in that land between rebuilding. In, but yet trying to retool at the same time because you have, you know, Matt Ryan who for the most part of the last decade decade and some change has been a you know a staple for that franchise and you know won the MVP a couple years ago, got helped get to the Super Bowl. You had Julio Jones who who's now gone. Um it's it just it's just this team now, new regime by Arthur Smith, new GM. And they had opportunity to draft a quarterback for the future. They chose not to. They chose to draft, to draft maybe the best player in the draft, and Kyle Pitts, uh, dynamic uh, tight end slash receiver, whatever you want to call him. He call he's an offensive weapon. Uh, but I, I I just think they're in, they're in that land between rebuilding and retooling. And when you're trying to chase, you know, Tampa and trying to chase New Orleans as far as roster. And you're trying to stay ahead of Carolina. It's just a hard. It's hard to do when you, on like living in the past with Matt Ryan, yet you try to move on at the same time for the future with the new GM and new coach. So, uh, what, what's your thoughts about Atlanta, man? Man, it's been a wild ride for the Falcons, man. They they fired Dan Quinn midway through last season. Finally. That was, you know, that was in our opinion long overdue. Um, you had, of course, the the Julio Jones. I, I'm out of there. We had Shannon Sharp calling him on, on live TV. So, you know, they, they've made some changes. <laughs> uh, the new GM, Terry Fontenot, did make a trade to get Julio out of there. He's now on the tight, so we talked about previously. So, the Falcons, man, they're just trying to navigate this whole retooling and reshaping of the roster and the front office pretty much. Um, so, I guess you have now Calvin Ridley stepping up to be a number one. You have Kyle Pitts. Um, I think Matt Ryan still has some more good years left, but, you know, you got a new coach, Arthur Smith, former OC of the Titans. That's, you got to learn a new system, new language with him. Um, we know everybody isn't cut out to be a head coach. Some guys are built to be coordinators, so let's see how the Arthur Smith um, yeah, hiring really translates shit. to on the field, in the locker room. So I think the Dan Quinn voice had just wore thin, so I think they needed to change. But um, roster-wise, man, they they got some work to do. Um, Matt Ryan, a few more years left. You drafted Pitts, Ridley, solid weapons. But um, outside of that. They, 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 yeah, Grady, I mean, those are, those are the names you'll see that stand out. But after, after that, it's like, what else do you have? You know, defensively. They're, they're nothing to write home about. Um, running back wise, nothing that really just stands out. I hey, mean, shout, Mike out Davis, shout out Mike Davis now. Shout out Mike Davis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going we're gonna to give respect to Mike Davis, but you know, they don't really have that elite running back or that elite running back by committee that makes you just go, like, okay, this could this could do some things on, you know, yeah. if they need a, a thousand yards, 1200 yard rushing, you know. Because I think they're going to be behind in so many games this year that Mike Davis will be a non-factor. I think they're going to be pack, just passing the ball a lot. So, hey, I need um, you. To, Matt Ryan's turnovers may be kind of high from throwing the ball so much. I mean, I'm going to need you to take that statement back about Mike Mike Davis not being nothing because he's my best dynasty running back. <laughs> I need yeah. I need Mike now. I need Mike. I need Mike to go crazy. Yeah, I'm not sure how good they'll be, man. Like I'm. I don't see them being – with the, the way their roster is constructed, I don't think they have a top 20, top 25 defense. Nope. I, I, I just think Matt Ryan is going to be throwing the ball a lot. Um, a lot of garbage yards in the four quarters is just trying to run the clock out. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this. When, when, you're looking at, when you're looking at things as far as offensively, 
I think I think something that's very underrated for the team is the, the addition of Cordero, Cordero Patterson. Um, when you talk about in the kickoff return game, the punt return game, somebody who's if they had a Hall of Fame for just returners, like if that got in the Hall of Fame, he probably he's definitely a top three or top four in my opinion. Uh, obviously, Devin Hester one of the best to ever do it, but. Uh, if he if he if he comes in and, and brings a different dynamic, you know, because he can but he can be a running back or receiver. If he brings a different dynamic, that can help out a lot, especially in the backfield. Man, Ryan, like you said, with with the with the offensive line, where is at the point where it's put up a shut up. You drafted two guys in the first round a couple of years ago, and it still hasn't worked yet. And 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 it's like, okay, are y'all are y'all the guys, or did we just waste waste a first round pick and put ourselves back some more years? Um, and I think that's what Atlanta is trying to do is like you're 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 keeping Matt Ryan to stay to stay afloat, but do you have even the team to where you can be that Drew Brees, Sean Payton when you're just gonna be five hundred because we got a good quarterback? And I you know, when you talk about the roster, you look down at it, it you 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 really don't see it. Outside of Grady Jared on defense, you got Dante Fowler Jr., Deion Jones. Everyone else, you're you're you're, you're kind of hoping comes come, come, like comes to light, like Ada Terrell, uh, his and going his second year, um, whether he can be a shutdown corner. Like you need guys, you you gotta hit on draft picks now, and when you, if you if you hit on Kyle Pitts and if you hit on Ada Terrell, well maybe we got something going. Maybe maybe you can you can do, you know, muster up something again. But with a team they got a, they got Arthur Smith, who you mentioned, you know, about the coordinator spot, he don't have a Derrick Henry. Uh, to rely on, uh, he, don't, he don't he don't he don't have that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a big monster to rely on right, for the last few years uh, as a coach. But you don't have that, so he's coming in, and we we both got him last due to the profit playoff theory. Uh, being a new coach, um, you know, especially especially in this division where you, we got other big names that we'll get into later. Uh, where 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 can they go? And I just, I, I, I just, it struggled to look at, to look at their line and say like, oh, they can win more in this games because Vegas, Vegas, as, as I pull up the, the, the Vegas odds, Vegas, Vegas has Atlanta seven and a half, and when we went through the schedule together. It was, it was tough. I, 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 I don't know where they got seven and a half from. Um. You know, you, you talk about big stretches when you had to play. You had to go at Miami. You get Carolina at New Orleans, at Dallas, and then New England game. Like that's just, you know, even that kind of stretch. You'd be like, mm, can they win that game? Can they beat Tampa Bay Giants and Washington all in a row? Then that's it's, it's it's a lot of stretches like that where, you know, you just you just hope that Atlanta can get one out of the next four. And I don't see how they got seven. So. Which which is pretty much what five hundred football seven and ten eight and nine that, uh, to me that's you know right right around the cups of mediocrity um, and I don't see if I don't see Atlanta doing it at all. Yeah, I mean I'm not a Falcons fan, but I like Matt Ryan. I still think where he's at in his career, he is a top twelve, top thirteen QB in the game right now. Um, I mean if you really just nitpick it you can you can probably find like, i can i can kind of see why they may have if you just took the easiest games i can see why the line is around seven like if you just took the phillies the the giants the jets a split with carolina and there would be four jacks five detroit six and maybe a split with new orleans seven okay um i mean i can i can kind of see where they might have got that seven from but that's just being overly optimistic I don't. I don't see the Falcons getting seven wins or over seven wins. I have them under. I have them at at four wins, and I just think with their roster and the teams they're playing, I just think they're going to be outmatched uh, most weeks, or they won't be able to get the stops to close out most teams. Yeah, if they're I in a close game. Is. I would say I think that's what it is because it was a couple of years ago where they had a great offense, but the defense always will will blow the game anyway. So. I got Atlanta at six and eleven. Um, I, I showed I showed a little bit more respect than you did on that on that part, but you know, I I think that's where they at. I, I think if you're a gambling person, taking the under is probably the safer safer bet. And you're talking about the first with through the first five weeks, if they if they get three wins, they may be in trouble. But if they're at one and four or two and three, 
you might you might be smooth smooth, smooth sailing ahead because you know it, it is a lot of tough games on, on the at, you know after the bye. Um, you know, and even that's even, what, that's what I hate. They have the early bye. They have a week six bye, so you're gonna play a lot of games. That's you're, gonna, you're gonna you're gonna play a lot of games after the bye, man. Yeah, a, a early bye, and that's then tough. you have a, a you know. I just don't think, man, that, that early buy is going to hurt them because they just have so many tough games. And yeah. with a new coach, I, I just think that that's going to hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Arthur Smith, word of advice. Just so you know, Derrick Henry ain't walking through that door. That's, that's just something you need to know. Um, from one, one, one dynamic running back and Derrick Henry to another, Christian McCaffrey, Carolina Panthers. They was 5-11 and 11 last year. Um it's it's a it's it's an, it's another team that's that's growing. Um, you know, the last year I think they was the only team ever in history to draft all p- picks on one side of the ball, all defensive side. Now you get uh, you get Sam Darnold instead of Taylor Bridgewater, and you know for the people who've been on Sam Darnold, this is the opportunity for them to to rise out of the ashes. There's no Adam Gase around you. You got Joe Brady and offense coordinator Matt Rule, who's we know his track record as far as building programs. He has turned around Temple University, turned around Baylor, and can he turn around the Carolina Panthers? That's the next docket. And now that he got a quarterback who has the tools, now it's up to Sam Darnold to, to show the tools and use the tools, especially now that he's not no longer on the Jets where he got Chris McCaffrey instead of what an aging Le'Veon Bell and an aging Frank Gore. Now he got now he got uh, Robbie Anderson again. Uh, DJ Moore, who's a stud, and you do, you, you're talking about having the weapons. And when you have when you got a QB who's young, and you put him around somebody like that, that's 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 good GM is you know on on, my, on, on their part bringing him in because what, what they get for like a second round pick or some, something a low a very low reward a r- low risk to get Sam Darnold, and then if he turns out to be your franchise quarterback. For what he's done in the past, there's no way after one season, unless they go to the Super Bowl, he's going to ask for big money. So you might even get away with paying him twenty million dollars and having so much money to use, versus you know teams like you know just just name name a few, uh, the Minnesota Packers, the uh, uh, Chiefs when your quarterback is making you know so much so much money, and if, and with Sam Donald being a low risk high reward. I mean, really, the sky's the limit for Carolina and this uh, this uh, this offense and defense team. Yeah, it's uh, it's lights, camera, action, scene two for Matt Rule, his second year there in Carolina. <laughs> They've hit the reset button. They got Ted Ridgewater out, brought in Sam Darnold. I think they should be taking a long term approach. They shouldn't just do this as a a one year approach because by going to get Darnold, you're looking at okay. If this does work out, do we pay him? Do we go back and reevaluate and go back to the draft board? So you're looking at a couple of things in regards to that. You know, you've hit the reset button on your your QB spot two years in a row. Cam is out, <laughs> Teddy. Now you, you know they had the uh, you know under a very countdown experience. Now with Rule, they had Teddy. Now you have Donna. So uh, you hit the reset button. Do you hit it again if Donald doesn't pan out? Um, we know the Adam Gase factor is real. We 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 saw what Tannehill did post Adam Gase. So uh, <laughs> hey, if that's if that's what we that's the history we got, we got to look at. Then that's, that's pretty good. Then. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's the it's that big question of does Sam Darnold have that same leap? Because he he's the wild card. He mm-hmm. he's basically going to determine how high this team can ascend. So. Yep. Yep. Um, let's let's see if he can take a big leap after basically being underwhelming so far in his career. You know, he was a, a high pick, um, but granted, situations do play a part in how you perform. So let's see what he can do. He has some weapons. Uh, Chris McCaffrey, arguably the best back in football, depending upon who you ask. Uh, DJ Moore, one of my favorite young receivers in the game, reunited with Robbie Anderson. They had some some nice plays together with the Jets. So. Um, it's gonna be an interesting year for for Darnold, you know. Um, I think they can trend in the right direction with Matt Rule and Joe Brady. He's gonna have he has the coaching around him to be better. Mm-hmm. So that that's the, that's the thing you want to see. You want to at least give him the tools to see what he can be. 
So it's just going to be a matter of how good is he this year, and then that'll determine if they decide to move forward with him in the future or do they decide to go back to the drawing board and uh, reset QB again next year. Uh, defensively, they got a couple couple things over there, Burns, Jeremy Chin, a couple things, but um, they're still a young team trying to find their way. Hey, I, I kind of want to ask you this. It kind of like maybe a little tangent of what – of because like I think that's the question you said about Darner being the wild card and situations play a role. I mean that's that's life in general. Do you think Sam Donald is still the worst okay, obviously Josh Rosen the worst quarterback of the five because you know he can't even start, you know, at least Donald starting. But do you think if Sam Donald went one to Cleveland or you know, if the, if we did a hindsight draft where Josh Allen goes to the Jets or Lamar goes to the Jets do you do you do you think if Sam Donald didn't go to New York, we would be talking about him in a whole different light? Or do you think, like, do you, do you think he could have he could have helped Buffalo the way Josh Allen did, or do you think he could have he could have uh, not let the Cardinals choose Kyler Murray if he went there instead? Like, do you, you think you think Sam Donald got like got it, or do you think he he's the type of guy that needs to have the right situation for everything to be perfect for him to succeed? Oh, yeah, he, he's definitely going to be a situational QB. I mean, I think everybody from his draft is a situational QB. Like, Lamar going to the Ravens, that's the perfect spot for him because they transformed their whole team to fit him. Josh Allen, Brian Dable, they were patient with Josh Allen, helped develop him. We saw how bad Baker was before, you know, they made the changes there against the fans. He had a career year, and now they talk about paying him potentially long-term money. So I think that whole draft, has just been a situational type draft. I mean, you rarely get just a transcendent talent that can just overcome everything. Like Andrew Lux don't pop up every draft <laughs> class. So, yeah. you know, he was winning 11 games with the worst old lines, worst defenses out there. So you don't, you don't get those many guys that can just cover up so many weaknesses with their talent, but every so often like those generational talents and just that, that draft class, they're all good players, but they're just not those generational Type talents. All right, let's take a little peek into Carolina's schedule before we move on. Um, I, I, I was sitting at, uh, they, the Vegas has them at seven and a half, and I'm sitting here looking at the schedule, and they they just like the Atlanta Falcons. It's 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 I think it's easier to find seven than it is with Atlanta, but at the same time, it's still difficult. Um, obviously, you start the season off against the Jets, but and, and Texas in two of your first three weeks, but you you pencil in at New Orleans, at Dallas, or Philly. Uh, game which you know we I don't think we too much high on them but Minnesota you got New England penciled in down there it's it's it was not a terrible schedule it's just the fact that you know you probably gonna have two L's already you you already starting the year off zero and two because you got the Buccaneers in your division so it's kind of like how, how can we muster up another wins to get there and I I, I can see it uh, I, I think Vegas Vegas are pretty much close to the line and I think we are right there with them as far as where we at? I, but right now we got a slight under um, seven and a half. I had them at seven and ten. So, so that's I mean that's and, and that's uh, toss up games where you got uh, Washington or you got uh, when when they when they play Philly when they play the the Jets. You know those are can they beat those type of teams and, and, and get over the hump? That's that's all you have to worry about. Yeah, I'm I'm going under for their win total. I have them at six and eleven, but this is a bet that if you really believe in it, you should go for it. Like under that's that's over or under. If you believe in yeah. it, you gotta go for it because this is one of those those teams where depending upon how they how they start, you could be sweating it out. You know, because at, at the end, of course, they gotta play Tampa Bay twice and Buffalo. So you can go ahead and try to probably pencil in and that's gonna be at Buffalo. So you can probably go ahead and pencil in three L's right there. Right. But everything else, man, it, it could make you sweat. You know, you open up with the Jets. Um, you got Houston up there, Philadelphia, like just a couple of teams that are considered going to be towards the bottom of the league. Of course, we mentioned – we'll talk about them in a second. Saints with no Drew Brees. You still got to go to that, that crazy stadium. But, you know, without Drew Brees, you don't fear them right, as, much, as, yeah. as much, you know. You still got to deal with teams like, uh, you know, the Giants that that could, you know, the, the Daniel Jones thing. How good will he or won't he be? 
Um, the Patriots week nine, will they be going through a QB controversy? So you got some teams where you can maybe catch somebody slipping and potentially sweat out the over or the under. But I haven't met six wins. I mean, I think Donald, depending upon what the Saints do at QB, I think Donald's the third best QB here. Um, and then you got to look at just the coach, Matt Rule's second year. I think he's the third best coach in the division. So uh, they won't be in the playoffs, but they will have potential to catch a couple of teams slip in and maybe make a couple of games competitive. I'm going to say, I, I think I'll double down right here and say the Carolina Panthers, once again, will be a – would be a uh, you know a pain in the ass. Like I, I think six six or seven wins, but probably when you look at their right record or look overall, they probably have four games losing by one possession. You know, or or like they lose the coin, they don't lose a little pass interference call here, and now they lost the game. It, it, it's gonna be stuff like that that probably holds Carolina back as a young team. And I think they're probably maybe one more year away, especially if Sam Donald is anything that we think he could can be with the situation that he's in now with no Adam Gase. You remove Adam Gase, you go from you go from the worst t- uh, quarterback in the league to at least number twenty five. You know, so that's it's already an improvement. Now that you got and you got McCaffrey around, DJ Moore around you, Robbie Anderson, do you go up to number twenty like that? So that's that's the kind of range that you know Sam Donald is is going from from New York to to Carolina. So. They're gonna be an interesting team. I think they're gonna be one of the most teams that put a pain in your ass for real. Cause you go in, you go play Carolina. You think you're gonna be shit gonna be sweet? <laughs> you gonna go home with a L? Yeah, so, you gonna be you gonna be in a fight because they have firepower and they have some they have some solid players on defense. Man, they yeah. drafted they JC just, they, Horn. They just young. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. They they got to get some experience together. And like right now is one of those times where you want to capitalize on those young contracts. You know, if they could get QB figured out quick, maybe hit on picks, they could be a a standing team, right? All right, let's go. Let's move on to the New Orleans Saints. Let's go down to the Bayou. No Drew Brees uh, last year. They were twelve and four. Actually, they won this division. They beat the Buccaneers twice in the season. Lost to them in the playoffs. Uh, the Vegas line had them at nine wins. So without Drew Brees, they say in twelve and four go to nine, nine and what nine and eight now with the, with the add added extra game. <clears throat> uh, it, this team got two situations. It is the QB situation, Jameis versus Taysom, and then it's the Mike Thomas situation with the with the whole surgery, um, you know, getting getting late and whether he get traded or not, and all this kind of stuff. So let's start with the QB situation, Winston versus Taysom. You know where I'm going with this. If we do if we're doing a ranking of quarterbacks and you separate the two, I'm taking Winston a lot higher. Like in my QB ranks, probably like above, probably a top twenty-five without even without question. But if it's Taysom Hill, I I just I just don't see myself putting him in a top twenty-five situation. And yeah, he can be you know serviceable when you got the handoffs and you got the play action RPOs and all that kind of stuff. But I am I I just I just don't understand like why they gave they gave they paid him what they did as far as a, a QB, but he can do other things. But if he make if he win QB one. He's not on the special teams. His value go down because he's not doing the tight end, and you want to protect them more. So you're not probably not as running as much as you would with him if you had a Drew Brees. So that and that's I, I think I think they're going to work, like make his value go down because when he's already not as good as QB, now you got him playing QB and not playing the special teams role and tight ends role and all that kind of stuff. Now you just now you now you just got all over the place where you got a guy like Jameis who's capable of getting you five thousand passing yards. And yeah, he might throw thirty picks too, but I think under under Sean Payton tree, under 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 learning from Drew Brees that he's not going to do he's not going to be the same guy he was in Tampa, and I, I think I can double stamp that that like he learned something by now. The Saints are just so funny, man. Like they've just been <clears throat> in the news for so many different reasons. You got Jameis running through the. <laughs> 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 Man, James is funny, bro. That's a, that's a funny individual. Like, James got hit, stick running, running during the practice drill. Mike Thomas, it seemed like the last couple of years, he's been a headache for him. I want my money. He gets his money, get hurt. Uh, take all, you know, he played through injury because it was Drew Brees' last Fight year. Fight teammates. <laughs> and then, yeah, you, you get getting in scuffles. Then now the, the whole surgery thing. Um, Man. And, 
Then you add on top of that, my biggest concern was just their their salary cap situation. Like they are in salary cap purgatory. They are they are strapped. So they've made some roster cuts and things that I think could hurt them. Uh for the third time in a row, I think Vegas is being way too generous. Um I think Sean Payton is the best coach in this division. His track record is proven what he can do on the offensive end. Um Jamie said he wanted to go down there to go to QB camp. I'm sure under Sean Payton's tutelage and a year under Drew Brees, Jameis has learned some things along with getting that eye surgery. But, man, he, I think the Saints have a long road ahead, uh, just salary cap-wise and with the Mike Thomas thing. And um, can Ava Kamara hold up now? Because your receiver core might slant board with the main thing. So now you you count on – you know, Trey Quan and all those guys to, to come through for you, man. So I'm I'm wondering by adding Devontae Freeman and you still have to take his merger, they kind of just make Kamara become a de facto receiver. receiver. Yeah, he receiver. That that's that's the only way you might well go wishbone with Taysom Hill at quarterback. <laughs> like I'm I'm wondering what they're gonna do this year, man. You don't like, need- I, I think Vegas is being way too generous with nine wins. Like I think even at an advanced age in football years, losing Drew Brees is that that's not just a three three win no deficit. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's not him and Sean Payton. Those, those guys were, were locked in for too many years, and it's just certain stuff that Drew Brees could do game situation wise. Just, I mean, he was the team leader. He was doing all the pregame speeches. It's just certain things that he had his pulse on that I don't think. I mean, I guess they count on Sean Payton doing one heck of a coaching job, but right. I, I can't see the Saints getting a nine wins. I think seven is the max. Yeah, and it's crazy. It's crazy because the way the way me and Rashad got this that got the schedule is uh, I I actually had the Saints being four and ten going into the last three games, while Rashad Rashad had them being being uh, uh being five and ten going into the last two weeks. So that's I think that's a that's a big problem. We 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 seen here saying Saints re like bounce back at the end towards the end to even be, you know, respectable. Where for the most part we have them, you know, way under five hundred and clearly the work probably just as bad as Atlanta, but they come around and win some games and instead of being a top seven draft pick to get a QB or whatever they're gonna be like number thirteen now, you know, um, and, and the, the Saints. That this is this is, this is another under that I'm gonna have to smash um, with with confidence with confidence because I don't I don't know how they could like you said with the leadership I don't know how they can win even even if it's Jameis who I think is the better the better quarterback of the two, but who are you throwing the ball to? Like as much as we love Sean Payton. I I think <laughs> I think I think we can we, we can all agree any sport can you name a great coach that didn't have a great player or vice versa like, like I guess vice versa is more, probably more you can find more you can find more great players that don't have great coaches but you ain't finding great coaches who ain't got no great players and Sean Payton outside of my, outside of Slam Boy and Camara Callaway and Traquan Smith and uh, 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 who was I missing? Uh, you, you had you had uh, Emmanuel Sanders, and Jared Cook. They old, so you had to let them go. You got um, the, the tight end Troutman and, uh, and Adam Troutman, I think his name. Like that's another guy. At least in fantasy, I'm gonna take him. But you know, he got he got nothing. And how is Sean Payton gonna draw this up? <laughs> hey, coach of the year. If he if they get ten wins, coach of the year, get it to him. I mean, I like their defense, man. Like, well, certain people on there. I like Davenport. I like Demario Davis. I like Cam Jordan, Janoris Jenkins. Uh, I, I like Lattimore. I mean, I like some of their stuff on defense. Yeah. But I don't I don't know, man. Like, I think off, offense could hold them back a little bit. I mean, I, I just think they have a couple of – He got he got to coach, coach his ass off. Yeah. I mean, I just think they have a couple of things where they got to get it figured out, and it's going to take a year or two to get it figured out pretty much their, their season will be determined in the first eight weeks. You're going to start off with green Bay at home. Granted green Bay has been going through their turmoil, but I mean, this should be a prime time matchup. Normally breeze versus Rogers, but without breeze, I got to take <laughs> Rogers by default. You're going to go on the road to new England. Uh, you're going on the road to Washington with their, their vaunted defense. You get your bye. 
you're going to go to Seattle, and then you'll come back home and play Tampa Bay. You swept Tampa Bay in a regular season last year, and you will not sweep them. You probably won't even win a game against them this year. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, just just those games alone in the first eight weeks are probably all L's. Yeah, I, 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 have, I, have, I have the same thing. I had them only winning – Winning one game well, in the first eight weeks, <laughs> so so it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. I don't know. I don't understand the nine. I get it. I think they they're going with that probably that Bears. How the Bears played the last few years with Mitch Trubisky, like just overwhelm you on defense, um, and that's your key to success. But if you get behind like the Ravens, what are you gonna do? And 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 that's probably that's probably that's probably what the Saints are at right now. Uh, whoever's at quarterback. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I I, I want to see how uh, how it goes down in the Bayou, man. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting. The the, the Pelicans, the Saints, both of them yeah, sorry. Gonna <laughs> both are gonna be bad need, now. Need to move, boy. Uh, all right, so let's let's go to the Super Bowl champs, man. Let's 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 talk, let's talk about. A real a real winner, you know. Let's talk about team who's gonna put some who put some wins on the board. Tampa Buccaneers they won. It was eleven and five last year. Uh, Vegas had them at twelve wins this year. Um, they basically had the running back mentality. Uh, you bring you bring you got Brady back. You bring A B. You got Guy and Evans. Uh, Gronk is here. You brought Sue back. You 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 got you got Devin White. You brought you got Antoine Winfield getting better. Uh, you you just you just got a great. A great team, and that's right. And that's and that's like that's. I know that's kind of crazy to say, but that's that's it. And on top of that, what? Why they? Why? Why you think they're gonna win a lot of games this year? They have a second place schedule. They won the Super Bowl with a second place, and they got second place. Like that's 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 how that's how you stay stay at the top because teams like the Chiefs, who who you know who won who won the division last year, they got to play all the great teams who won the division. But now you but 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 teams like the Buccaneers. Instead of playing, you know, instead of playing Green Bay, uh, Green Bay, you get Chicago. Like, <laughs> like that's just that's and that's that's a that's a that's a difference, a big difference. I think well, Washington. So Dallas can't. I think this uh, Dallas came in third, right? So, uh, well, they. I think they got they got that whole division anyway. So it, it wouldn't matter. But you know, if, if they was playing that division, they would get they would get. Uh, who, who came in second for the NFC East last year? Giants. Or Cowboys, so. or Cowboys, one, one of those two. But you, you will get. Me might get Cowboys this time, so that's probably a different story. But you know, but the fact is, you got you got to avoid a lot of first place teams. I mean, just, I mean, it's it's not too much to talk about Tampa Bay. I mean, they have the they 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 have the best quarterback in the division. Um, then they have this you know second best coach in my opinion, in Bruce Arians in the division. And when you have a top two coach and a top two quarterback, you probably that's that's right with the playoff theory. You right up you in the playoffs. So it's not it's not a it's not a matter of like you know uh, if they make the playoffs it's like what C would they be, um, and I have them pretty high. So man, I'm not usually a fan of the whole running back thing, but with the way their team is constructed, they're in win now mode. You kind of had to run it back. You got yeah. Brady. I mean. His last year in New England, it looked like he was aging, but he just didn't have the weapons. I mean, at, at his age, he still can do his thing. He just needed the weapons, and he proved that with Tampa Bay, you give me the weapons and a solid defense, I can, I can get on. us to where we need to go. And they were 11-5, played some role playoff games, but they got to the Super Bowl, and they dominated the heck out the Chiefs. And they brought back every key free agent, all your young guys, now that they've been around, some vets been around Brady, that that one year is going to be huge for them, like the Tristan Wirfs and all those guys. Yep. I mean, he, he's a freaking machine. I mean, you saw video of him in the offseason doing box jumps. I mean, that, that's a dude. That dude's a machine. Come on up. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and this, this team, they won last year with some key guys injured, like yeah. – uh, O.J. Howard, Cam Brake, those guys will be back. You got Antonio Brown midway through the year, Fournette midway through the year. Um, and they, they, still they, have, they added um, Gio Bernard at running back. Like, yeah, they, they have Gio Bernard, and you already still have uh, Leonard Fournette, who 
And on this team, I mean, I think he was a solid back anyway, but now that you're just saying, like, just run the ball, you ain't got to do all the extra catching and stuff. For net, it's going to be big time. You still got Ronald Jones. I mean, the defense, you signed back all your key <laughs> all your key hitters, Shaq Barrett, JPP, Devin White, <laughs> Antoine Winfrey Jr., those young guys. That. I mean, you, you brought back your entire 22 starters, man. Like, I think they're going to run rough shot over the – over the season, man, I think they're gonna probably be at least a fourteen win team. So, and yeah, that twelve wins, I mean, smashing that over. Yeah, that, that, that twelve wins. I mean, that's that's modest because you're you're playing. I, mean, the, I, I think they're the best team every week. They they step on the field. I think they're the best team. The only team that you can probably match up with them and say will be close would be the Rams, and and they're traveling west. Um, of course, they're going to play some teams with some good defenses, and you know, there's always trap games and stuff like that. Right, but right. The, the two best rosters I think they're going to play are going to be the Rams and the Colts, and then Buffalo right there as well. But those are going to be the toughest three games. I'm about to say it, it and it's like on uh, paper. yeah, <laughs> on paper. On paper, uh, I think I think I think I think the part we have to talk about is like. Where where is like you you see you see where they can get trapped up at, but like you mentioned about how great the roster is, you just you you just you just expect them to to come out here and and win a lot of games. I mean, it, uh, it's all the week against Dallas. That's gonna be a hyped up game. Uh, and and, and the, you play you play the what the, the NFC East, who last year Washington won what seven at seven nine eight and eight to win the division. And you had the AFC. That was a tough playoff game, man. With, it with was Tyler, uh, behind the key. So if that's the thing, in Washington, in Washington, if Fitzpatrick can play Fitzmagic football, that could be a trap game. You know, and, and, and it's, it's it's a lot of teams like that on the schedule. They got Miami. Uh, they, like I said, like I can say Buffalo. Um, but it just it just it just so it's it's just so hard to be the team that has a great roster, has a has a great QB. He's number one in the division. A great a great coach. And on top of that, you got the second place schedule. Like you didn't even get the first place, so you got to play the second best team in every other division, and you already the best team in, in the league. Like so, that's that's where Tampa Bay shines. Um, probably be the one seed again, and if that's the case, probably favored to win the Super Bowl again. Um, I mean, I I don't, I don't know what to say. They, they just they they just too it's just too great. I. I you can't you can't have the great roster like that and think they're not going to win it again. Yeah, I mean it's just a matter of how many games are they going to win because they're yeah. going to be favored every week. I'll take the I over. Mean, I'll, I'll take over definitely. Like, yeah, yeah, they they should definitely be favored every week. I mean, then the back end of their schedule is favorable, so you know, yeah, there are going to be some some trap games here and there. Um, of course, you'll have the hype of the New England game and stuff like that, but. You know, there there are some some games in there where they could slip up, but 12, 12 wins should be a lot. You can go ahead and book it. Yeah. All right. So let's let's uh let's let's wrap up the NFC South uh with a couple of things real quick. So going going through the ranking for the coaching, um, so we 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 both agree that Sean Payton is number one, followed by Bruce Arians. Now I think that's a very close race. I don't think Sean Payton blows him out the water. Um but uh, we'll still get this light edge to, to Sean Payton. Uh, number three, we got Matt Rule, uh, consensus. And then number four, Arthur Smith from the Tennessee Titans, we talked about earlier. Uh, QBs, QBs in this division, we pretty much the same. We got Tom Brady, number one, Matt Ryan, number two. And we talk about it, Matt Ryan, number two, is just probably by default. He probably a top, still a top 15 quarterback. But Carolina, does Sam Donald get into that top 20 range? And then New Orleans, when they got two guys who they still haven't made their mind up, so um, you know that can be that can flip flop. Uh, you you got Sam Donald at three, I had him at four because I, I think Jameis is better. But if you told me Taysom Hill starting, Taysom at four, and Donald at three. So um, with that being said, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if you <laughs> if you did if you didn't if you didn't know now now you know that they, we we have to win the division. I mean. We told you to hit, to hit the under on the Panthers, Falcons, and Saints. <laughs> so that's that's pretty obvious. So uh, we think Tampa Bay wins in this landslide based off the profit theory of all the numbers. It's a landslide, uh, not even close. So uh, Man, Tampa should double every other team in the division wins. Like, 
that they should have at least 14 wins. I think the max from Falcons, Carolina, and Saints would be seven wins. So that's a good book. The, bo- the, the book should be at least 14 wins. That's a good prediction right there. That, that, hey, we're going to make sure we round this back. We're going to round this back when, when we come back to it. Hey, that's that's the NFC South. Do you got anything else you want to add to this division? I mean, it's gonna it's Tampa it's Tampa Bay's division to lose at this point. I think you got to put Tom Brady up there for MVP consideration, man. He's gonna have all the weapons for the whole season. The record's gonna be there. He may go for five thousand passing yards. And and I'll say that like like I, I'll still double down that Carolina Panthers are going to be the pain in the ass of the league. Um, and Rashad said they're still in probably seven, and it probably is. But can can they can they push teams to the to the brink? And they got they got Tampa Bay in what two of the last three games. So we'll see if Carolina f- will fight for it and try to see if they can take out Tampa Bay. So uh, that's the NFC South. Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning the division. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. We got we got what that's that's only two down. So six more to go. <laughs> the year of the book, man. The book, the market books has won the NBA championship. The, the books from Tampa Bay previous year NFL champs. Let's see if they can run it back and defend the crown. Hey, hey, both teams running back. So hey, all right. Appreciate appreciate Rashad. We out.